and then rolled up his sleeves. He took some clay and worked all day until his masterpiece was done. Just before the setting sun it fades. With God's own loving hand, mankind was made. I think a poem would have been on that day. I feel so moved, I don't know what to say. What love for us our God has tried to show. His tender care he wants for us to know. I'm humble, yet I'm honored just the same. Handmade by God, what better claim to fame? I'm certain that He has a plan for me. I face each day with courage as I say. When God made man by his own hand, he knelt upon his knee and then rolled up his sleeves. He took some clay and worked all day until his masterpiece was done. Just before the setting sun did fade, with God's own loving hands, mankind was made. Very good morning to all of you. What a blessed. Easter weekend that we commemorate the death of Jesus on the cross and a wonderful time that we can study a new theme for this quarter. This Saturday is the beginning of the new quarter, the second quarter of 2021 and we will be studying God's covenant, his plan of salvation. His original plan for earth. So today we're going to study something that is very relevant to our existence. Why we come to this state of our sinful nature. What happened? Before we begin, let's bow our heads for prayer. Oh dear God, our heavenly Father, thank you for blessing us for the last three months while we study the book of Isaiah your love and your redemptive plan this morning and for the next 12 weeks we will be studying your covenant your original covenant your revised covenant and your restored covenant I pray Lord you will enlighten us Help us to know our purpose in life so that we can carry out this purpose and do the things that will please you most. Give us wisdom as we study today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. This is the screen that you have seen. If you cannot see, let me know. God's distorted image 
what happened. I just want to let you know where we are on Earth. The Earth is actually the third planet away from the Sun. Okay. The Earth is situated at the right place, at the right orbit. Not too near, it will be burning hot. Not too far, it will be too cold. There is no inhabitable space in other planets. God placed the Earth at the right place at the right time. And where is the Earth in the Milky Way? As you know, the Earth in the solar system is one star, right? Is one star. And the Earth is located halfway between the center of the Milky Way. And its outer edge, like outer edge, light at the galaxy center takes 25,000 light years to travel from Earth. So one light year is a distance of light traveling. So you can see the Earth is here, hardly you can see it. And this is the Milky Way. Okay. And from here to here, it takes 25,000 light years. So the span of the Milky Way is quite huge. It can be a hundred or 100,000 light years, okay, from tip to tip. And that is just one galaxy. Our galaxy, we are living in the solar system and the solar system is just one star in the Milky Way. And Milky Way is made up of 100 billion stars. Or estimate only, eh? we cannot really know. So these stars are form a large disk whose diameter is 100,000 light years away. Okay, the Milky Way is one of the two trillion galaxies. Okay, it's estimated eh? the observable universe. That means what we can see so far is one of the 200 billion to 2 trillion galaxies. Uh, what is unobservable? It could be many, many dimensions, many, many sides. So you can times 10 times or 20 times this amount. So can you imagine how big the universe is? Today, we don't use the word universe. Anymore. We call it multiverse. So the so can you imagine how small we are? We are so small in the solar system. We are even smaller in the galaxy, and even tinier in the whole universe. And yet, God made us. Okay, so it's appropriate for us to come to our memory text today. Eh? Uh, Pearl, can you read for us this memory text? Yes, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Memory text. Then God said, Let us make men, humankind in our image, according to our likeness. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. So you can know how big the earth is. It's actually, actually very small in the whole universe. And God take the pain to create us in his image. Okay, So we are created in God's image. We are just like God physically, emotionally, mentally. So in his image, God created us. God likes company. It does not mean that he feels alone but that he loves to be in contact with other beings. He decided to create a new race of beings to love them 
and to be loved by them. He prepared a home for them. He lovingly molded them and taught them how to live happily with it. And this is the story of detention. We could have lived happily ever after, if not for the sin that we have. So today, this is our study, the creation of the world, the creation of human beings, God and humanity, the loyalty test, breakup and hope. So this is a summary of our lesson. God created us in his own image so that a loving fellowship could exist between him and us. Although the entrance of the earth shattered the original union, God seeks to restore this relationship through the plan of redemption. As dependent creatures, life takes on a new meaning and clarity only when we enter into union with our Creator. So the gospel message to be shared to the unbelievers is to come back to God, to be in union with our Creator, to find our origin and our purpose with Him. So the Bible just tells us that in the beginning, God created the, the heavens and the earth. Heavens referring to the stars, the galaxies, and so on, and the earth. So God created the heavens first, then the earth. So all the galaxies, all the stars that you have seen in the Milky Way and outside the Milky Way, God created them. In the account of creation in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to chapter 2, verse 3, God is not trying to prove that he created the earth or how he made life begin on it. He did not try to prove it. He just stated it. So it's up to us to believe it or not. So obviously, no human being saw it. So believing it, that God did it as it is a matter of faith. So it is by faith uh, that we believe. So God did not create a theory for us to believe. So a well-known scientist once gave a public lecture on astronomy. And an old lady got up and said that the world is a flat plate supported on the back of the tortoise. So the scientist replied, so what is the tortoise standing on? It's tortoise all the way down. Okay, you can see this. So she sincerely believed that what she said has no evidence also. So whether you believe in the evolution theory or your own theory or whether it is creation theory, all of us require faith and we cannot prove it. God does not require blind faith from us, however. He has left us proof of an intelligent design in creation so that we have evidence to believe if we want to. So it's up to us. So the Bible says God created man in his own image and in the image of God, he created him. He, male and female, he created them. So once our home was ready, God molded the first man with his own hands. Then he molded the first woman. That was God's last work. He created the, uh, the earth. Then you can see the first day he created light. The second day, third day, fourth day, so on. So everything was conducive before he created man. And everything was good when he created human being. He said it was very good. So everything was perfect. When God says very good, means it's very good. So human beings are unique. They were created in a different way. Okay? Everything God created, he spoke into existence. But for man, he created us by molding us from dust and to breathe into our nostril the breath of life. And this breath of life, huh, 
is called the Spirit of God. Okay? It's the same word uh, used in uh, Hebrew. So what does it mean uh, to be created in God's image? Our creator is reflected in our physical, mental, and spiritual nature. We are able to have relationship with God and to make moral decisions. Both men and women share this divine image and they are equal before God. As you can see, we are different from animals. Whereas the evolution theory put us on the same level as animals and we are not. Okay. Uh, this rest, can you read for us? Can you unmute and read this for us? Patriarchs and Prophets, page 46. Aim was created from a rib, taken from the side of Adam, signifying that she was not to control him as the head, nor to be trampled under his feet as an inferior, but to stand by his side as an equal, to be loved and protected by him. Yes. If you understand the creation story, then you will not have this gender inequality that we have today, where in many societies, women has been relegated to an inferior position and women are given lesser pay and women are given uh, a lot of tasks like a servant. But if you believe in God, how he created Adam and then Eve, Eve was actually a companion for Adam. They are supposed to be equal. Okay, he was not, Eve was not created from the head to control him. Nor was the bone taken from his feet to be under him, but from his rib that is closest to his heart to be loved by him. Okay. Bertina, are you able to read this for us? Genesis 1, 28 and 29. Okay, I'll read. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, See, I have given you every herb that yields seed which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed, to you it shall be for food. Okay, notice, uh, Bertina. Yeah. When you read this text, uh, I want you to answer this question. Uh. Mm. The question is, what does Genesis 1, 28 and 29 tells us we should do in order to fulfill the original purpose God has set up for us while we are still in our fallen nature? So in other words, uh, God's purpose before the fall, as you can see, mm -hmm. okay, you know, you can see, These are the instructions are given. After the fall, did God change the original purpose? So what are we supposed to do if we were to fulfill God's purpose in life? Fruitful and multiply. Okay, that's one. Dominion over, dominion over the animals. Um, and eating, eating, eating healthfully. In verse 29, as what God has commanded us to do, actually, I would say. That's right. These three things uh, before the fall of man. Uh, be fruitful and multiply. Uh, it's not just uh, to procreate. Uh, some people misunderstood this intention of God. Before you can procreate, you must have intimacy. Before you have intimacy, you must have relationship. Before you have relationship, you must be attractive, not just physically, but uh, emotionally and mentally. So you can see, uh, be fruitful and multiply is actually loaded with meaning. 
In other words, for us, uh, the main purpose in life is to be a very attractive individual on earth to, to influence people. Okay? Be fruitful not just in uh, procreation, but also in influence. Be a leader. Okay, that's very that's a very loaded thing, you know. The first thing in life, we must make use of our talents in while we are in our fallen state to influence others for good. Okay, we can have many friends, we can have family, but we can only have one spouse. So you can see, we are supposed to be friends with everybody. There are no enemies in God's original earth before the fall. And then a second, fill the earth and subdue it. Okay? Have dominion over all the animals. So actually all these resources of the earth belong to us. And we are actually given the stewardship to manage the resources of the earth. So number one is relationship. Number two is stewardship. Okay. How we manage God's finances in our life. Like today, we are living in our fallen state. We are living in the city. How we manage our money is very important. Unfortunately, today, most of the preoccupation of fallen men is to make money, is to create power. They want dominion over others. Okay? They want to extract as much money, as much wealth as possible. And that is a fallen state form of domination. Let's look at the third thing. God has given us the original diet. And this diet is a plant-based diet. And unfortunately, Today, many people are indulging in all kinds of food that is not original food. God never intends us to eat meat, right? Meat was only allowed after the fall, after, sorry, after the flood, not even after the fall. Okay. Adam, when he fell into sin, he was still a plant-based eater. But unfortunately today, a lot of people are eating based on good taste, not because it's good for health. As a result, we have all sorts of problems. As you can see uh, in the fallen nature, a lot of people have failed relationships, have a selfish domination over people, accumulation of wealth, we call it the false stewardship, false relationship, false stewardship, and false diet. So these three things, are, if you were to believe in God, you are supposed to restore relationship with one another. You are supposed to have the right management of your wealth. You are supposed to have the right diet. So you can see eh, God's original plan. is to restore this relationship, stewardship, and health practices. Okay? Uh, understand so far? Sorry, can I have a, uh, can I ask a question, Pastor Chan? Um, when I see the word dominion, I'm just curious, what does the word dominion in, Old Testament is Greek, is it? Uh, I wonder he, what it, Hebrew, Hebrew, Hebrew. Hebrew, I always get it mixed up. I wonder what it really means, dominion. And then as you were talking, the idea came, you know, dominion is like really power over the, the animals of the sea and, and birds of the air. Does it also, can it also be shown as, you know, when we have such great dominion, we start to overkill all these animals, you know, for our own consumption and all that, resulting in, you know, it, it really affects the ecosystem and so forth. I don't know, just a thought. Nah. Okay, the you know original of dominion yeah. is not to dominate. 
we have a fallen idea of domin dominion. Yeah. The unfallen idea is uh, to rule over them uh, righteously as God would to rule over the whole universe. So we are made in God's image, uh, don't forget. And how God rule us uh, is how we should rule the creatures. Do you understand? Uh? We are actually ambassadors of God to take care of all these creatures uh, on his behalf. We are not supposed to eat them. We are not supposed to kill them. But we are supposed to lovingly love them just like we, we keep our pets. Huh? You know, some of us have pets like dogs, cats, fishes, birds. We are supposed to love them. And uh, sometimes, I don't know whether you are the master over the pet, the, your pets or whether the pets huh, are your master huh? because you are really serving them. So what when it comes to the original purpose uh, of dominion uh, is to rule over in a righteous way as God loves us. Okay, that is the original meaning. Thank you. So we have to come back to the original way uh, of uh, fulfilling God's purpose. Okay. Today we're going to study how okay we have already read that okay next one huh? what do god's blessing and instructions for adam and eve involve you can see huh? they are able to reproduce as a species they were assigned to take care of the creation the dominion is to take care number two they were given a suitable diet according to what we are made they depended on God's blessing and care. They had everything they need. They didn't have to do anything to deserve it. So what happened? God took the first step to have a relationship with humankind. He blessed them and he also entrusted them with everything he had created. And this relationship grew over time as God used to walk in the garden every evening to have communion with Adam and Eve. So, when God gave us dominion over the creatures, God is actually saying, spend time with the nature, spend time with the creatures, take care of them, treat them as your pets. Okay? Then something happened. This is the crux of the story. Catherine, are you able to unmute to read for us? Okay. <clears throat> the loyalty test. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Genesis 2.17 Successful relationship must be based on mutual trust. God chose a simple loyalty test, just one, and not 10 commandments, not hundreds of them, but just one. You may eat from every tree, but this one belongs to me. You do not eat. So same here in human relationship. There are things that we should not encroach into other, one another's space. There are certain things that belong to an individual which we must understand the boundary and not encroach into it. So God gave humans the ability to freely make moral decisions and an innate desire to obey him. So that test was actually not difficult to pass. Very easy. In fact, the whole universe with trillions of galaxies and each galaxy with billions of stars. And each star passed the test. Except one galaxy in one solar system that is the star. And this one is called the Earth. They failed the test. After humans betrayed God's trust, 
they knew what evil was. As a result, they succumbed to alienation, loneliness, frustration, and death. So God's distorted purpose came into being. They no longer have intimacy. In fact, men do not cultivate relationship that leads to intimacy. There was, there is a lot of murders, rape. Okay. In fact, the sexual intimacy becomes an adulterated form of intimacy. Instead of correct stewardship on managing resources. We steal from one another. So our relationship with God will be effective and lost lasting if we choose to obey His will. So not right now. Uh, we are the only one uh, in the whole universe have this guilty conscience. And this guilty conscience is passed down from Adam and Eve. And what, what happened? Okay, Claire, can you read this for us? Uh, uh -huh. oh. uh, can you unmute? You, you are muted and then, uh, okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Break up and hope. And the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me, and I add Genesis 3.13. So the first thing uh, when, uh, when Eve succumbed to the temptation of the serpent, which was disguised by, as, uh, by, by Satan, by Lucifer, as a serpent to deceive her. The first thing when she committed this wrong, she became like Satan already. They don't take responsibility for their own wrong. They start to blame other people. If Satan had come to Eve with the actual physical appearance, she would have been suspicious. Therefore, she used a being that was familiar to deceive her, which is one of the animals. However, Adam was not deceived. He consciously made his decision to eat the fruit. So what is other... What were the consequences of this decision? They lost communion with God and avoided him. And they start to blame each other. Then God asked Adam, what this, is it that you have done? The woman that you make okay, gave me and I ate it. So Eve blamed the serpent. Adam blamed Eve. Okay? And Adam also blamed God. Uh, you go and make the woman. The woman make me sin. So there is a lot of mutual distrust. The horrible consequences of sin appear. Although the relationship was broken, God gave them hope. The first thing God gave was in the promise of chapter 3, verse 15. Okay, where... One of Eve's descendants would defeat sin and restore their broken relationship. And that would be Jesus, the coming of Jesus. So the coming of Jesus was straight away predicted in chapter 3 when men sin. It is a powerful gospel. So God actually have a plan. In case we sin, he already have a plan for us. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay, that's the end of our lesson. Eh? God created us in his own image so that a loving fellowship could exist between him and us. Although the entrance of sin shattered the original union, God seeks to restore this relationship through the plan of salvation. As dependent creatures, life takes on a new meaning and clarity only when we enter into union with our creature, with our creator. Can we ask, 
Okay, we have uh, Julius to read the next one for us. This is the last slide, actually. Julius, are you there? Or, yeah. To man, the first intimation of redemption was a communicate was communicated in a sentence also, in, a see of Satan in the garden. Also, John cannot see your screen. Okay, only you cannot see it. The rest are reading it. Please, uh, you do something about your own screen. Okay, continue, uh, Julius. This sentence uttered in the hearing of our first parents was to them a promise. While it foretold war between man and Satan, it declared that the power of the great adversary would finally be broken. Though they must suffer from the power of their mighty foe, they could look forward to final victory. I tell you, uh, the fall of man uh, was actually a sad event uh, in the whole universe, in the whole heaven. But God has a plan. That's the plan of redemption, to restore this broken relationship, to restore this distorted stewardship, and to restore the healthful diet. So it comes together. Once you are restored, right? you begin to live a life of sanctification. So some people say, once you accept Jesus as your personal savior, you are justified by faith. So while justified by faith, we still have to live on this earth. We are looking forward to the second coming of Jesus where we will be glorified. So between justification and glorification, there is a long journey of sanctification. So this long journey of sanctification uh, is not just to keep the Ten Commandments. You know. It's actually restoring a broken relationship between God and between men and among men. Okay? It is actually restoring our correct understanding uh, that everything that we have belongs to God. And whatever extra we have, we are supposed to share. And if God bless us, we are supposed to return time to acknowledge his creatorship. And then, while being redeemed by the blood of Jesus, we need to also restore our lifestyle of healthy living. We eat the right kind of food, not based on taste only, but based on what is helpful for us. So brothers and sisters in Christ, God's original plan still stands and God's final expectation or redemption of a redeemed being is actually a complete restoration of God's image in us. So today, and while we are justified and while waiting to be glorified, we still need to walk towards Restoring God's image. Okay. I hope I, I'm not creating something that is confusing. But actually to let you understand God's covenant plan and how we can restore it. Any question? Yeah, Sister Helen? I, a few days ago, my grandson asked me, why is God a man and not a woman? Okay. How do you answer? I told him, we don't know whether God is a man or woman, but he made a man and a woman and did they have equal partnership. So yeah, very good answer. <laughs> <laughs> very good answer. I like your answer. There are a lot of things, uh, since we are not God, and our understanding of uh, God uh, is not fully understood. We can only tell what we know. Okay. And a lot of people think that God is a man and therefore woman is subject to men. So 
this wrong understanding and need to be corrected. So when it comes to relationship, it is actually a very huge uh, facet. Okay. People spend the whole lifetime uh, to build intimate relationship with God and with one another. So life journey uh, is spending a lot of time with one another. Any other question or something to add? Do you learn something today about God's original purpose? Yes, uh, Bettina? It's a revision. Okay. Yeah, covenant. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, what else? Anyone else have anything to add? Yeah, you know, something about the restoration. Yeah. But one glimpse of restoration is in Revelation, where we see uh, the uh, new heaven, new earth created, the uh, new Jerusalem, <coughs> and so on. And so, this is my opinion, but the restoration will be not to the way Adam and Eve was originally but to a new, a new kind of life, a new restoration. That's my understanding. Yeah, but specifically, what is this new restoration about? Some people will ask. Any specific? Well, well we know that uh, we were with a spiritual restoration. We all, that's what uh, you mentioned. But it's more than just physical, uh, spiritual. There's also a physical, right? Yeah. And... and uh, so both of them will be restored, but it'll be different. I do believe there will be a difference from the rest of as what Adam and Eve were like. I mean, this is my understanding because uh, it's been 6,000 years. We have millions and billions of people being uh, born and formed. So there's something that is different from the time Adam and Eve, which was only two people. So now you have a state where uh, we have millions, maybe billions of people in heaven. So the state will be not the same, but we know that it will be good. And uh, so everything will be good in a sense, but different. That's my, that's how I feel. Yeah, but you do not know how different or what difference, you know. You are just speaking in general. But, but what I'm trying to tell you is this, uh, the principle, the three principles are still the same. The right, restoring right relationship that will never change. Uh, understanding right relation, uh, stewardship, managing of God's resources. Because we are told in Isaiah, everybody will have a home. Everybody will have a, a place in a mansion. Everybody will also plant their vineyards, you know, grow your own fruits, manage your own resources. And number three, eh, uh, we will continue to eat from the tree of life to depend on God. So these three things that we do is an unchanging principle. And how we fulfill these principles is the methods that we use. And different methods will be according to how many people we are associated, how much resources we have. Okay? I agree it will be different, but the principles is, are unchanging, these three principles. Don't forget, uh, principles never change. Methods change all the time. Okay. Principles never change. For example, the Jesus taught us uh, uh, when your enemy strike you on the left, turn the right cheek or so, right? Uh, the principle is do not take revenge. But this method uh, turn the other cheek. Uh, has to be selectively applied. When somebody shoot you on your left, you cannot say, can you shoot me on the right? Okay, that's, that doesn't make sense. Okay, so you have to apply the principle correctly, the method change all the time, just like we, how we keep the Sabbath. During the Old Testament, the way they keep it, and now it's very different. We have to apply according to the circumstances. Okay, thanks for your feedback. Any other question? Okay. Since there's no question. Yeah, uh, Lawrence, you have a question? 
Yeah, I was thinking uh, when will the process of uh, uh, justification end and certification start? Because it seems that you are uh, giving a long process. So I'm a bit confused on when it was it was then and when is it going to start? Okay, justification uh, is just a point action. Glorification is also a point action. That means that when you are justified, you are already uh, a Christian. You are saved not because of what you have done, okay, but because of the blood of Jesus, you are justified. And this justified is just one time. However, if you turn your back against God, you have to be justified again. Okay, you have to justify when, when you commit sin. However, while you are being justified, since you are still in your sinful nature, you have to walk uprightly. The walking uprightly eh, is a continual process until the coming of Jesus. Okay. So there's no end in justification. There's an end in just uh sorry, there's no end in sanctification, there's an end in justification. There's also an end in glorification. Okay. Once you believe in Jesus, he's the Lamb of God. He sacrificed for you. That's it. Very mighty at your background. Sorry, I have to Okay. If there's no other question, uh, no other feedback, let's end with a word of prayer. Shall we? Let's pray. Eh? Dear God, our Heavenly Father, we knew what happened to Adam and Eve. We know what happened to us. All of us are like sheep that have gone astray. We thank you for Jesus, for sending, thank you Lord for sending Jesus to come into this earth to die on our behalf. He's our Lamb of God. He's the answer for the complete redemption and restoration so that we can come back to the original purpose of having a right relationship with you and with others. The right management of our resources that you've given us and the right lifestyle and diet that we are supposed to adopt. So bless us today. Then may we practice this original purpose today and every day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a good week ahead. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Pastor Chan. Thank you.